Hey everybody, Leanna here. Um, desperately trying to get decent audio and um, practical headroom in a YouTube video shot by myself at home. Still failing, but um, yeah. Um, what I want to talk to today is about this whole grow a thicker skin concept that I'm seeing um, used all over the internet from all over different types of people to try to talk about video games and, and other things completely unsuccessfully. Um, and I, I want to make it very clear, I'm not calling out any particular faction on this thing. I'm not calling out anyone at all. I'm talking about a concept. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about a concept. Um, and there's, there's different words, there's different versions of this uh, grow a thicker skin thing. Some people go, I don't care about your feels um, a lot. The left uses it, the right uses it, radical feminists use it, you know, anonymous shit posters use it. Everybody uses this device. And what it, what it comes down to is the, the, the minute someone does the grow a thicker skin thing to me, that tells me that this is not a person um, who is interested in constructive, meaningful debate online. They don't care about the effectiveness of the feedback process because effective criticism is criticism that's provided in a way that the, the, the person being criticized can um, take it in and um, process it without having very human emotions hijack the process and have them go on the defensive and, and not listen to a freaking word you're saying because they're too busy tr figuring out 16,000 ways you're an asshole. If somebody thinks you're an asshole, they're not going to listen to you. So if you actually want to enact change in the gaming industry and not just bully someone into changing something because you told them to, not because they realized it was a light, right thing to do, well, you have to take the grow a thicker, thin, grow a thicker skin concept out of your lexicon. It's just not a good tool. It's not a good way to talk about how to make video games better or how to keep the good stuff in video games or how to make video games better for you. And I mean, that's really what most people talk about when they talk about making games better. It's how do video games, how can video games include me better? Because we, we all come from our own lenses and that's why we have a lot of discussions about things. And I'm not a big fan of insisting that certain things be requirements in a game. I mean, um, to me, there's no shortcut to diversity in video games. In order to get more diverse stories, you need more diverse people working in games. You, you can't have a meaningful story about God, I don't know, anybody who's not, you know, a white, straight, cisgendered male if that's who's making games. I mean, that's the perspective that, that uh, people, uh, people, people can only really be experts on their own perspective, right? Um, so, and, and I mean, some people do very, very good jobs of um, empathizing with people who are not of their, their group. I mean, if, if you've grown up in a particular community, even though you may not look like it, you, you have more understanding of it. But um, people can only tell their stories. You have to be a really good writer to be able to do anything else. And then it's that, um, I think what it actually comes down to is, is the more inherent opportunities you have in your own story, the harder it is for you to relate to struggles other people may have because you have no concept of that experience. I mean, and this is just my, again, this is just my personal, you know, anecdotal stuff. Um, people who have struggled understand struggle and, and they're able to understand struggles of a different type. If it didn't let them, let it beat them. I find that some of the people who are the most, and, and that's Binky struggling to break my house. Um, I find that people who gave up are the most judgmental of other people. They get bitter and they don't want to try to be nice because for whatever reason, something knocked them down in life and they couldn't get back up. Um, the rest of us would like to be able to get back up once, once we get hit. And then there's this phenomenon of, of the internet never forgets and some asshole is going to come back and find a, a tweet you wrote two years ago and, and spread that all around with no date on it, 
So people don't know when it happened, and I don't, I don't care who th- that's done to, even if I don't like the person. I don't like that tactic. That, that's not a good tactic. People change. People evolve. And, um, you know, we're, we're not going to get a more diverse landscape if everybody's scared. We're just not. The more, the more intimidated people feel, the more tribal they become. And, and, and the more under siege somebody is, the more likely they're going to lock it down and, and stick to people of their own opinions. And that's what's happening now. Everything's partisan. People are rewarding stuff they agree with, not stuff that's well argued or well made. You know, most people can't tell a good article from a bad article. People say things are well researched that really aren't. There was no research done on them at all. And it always makes me laugh because I know the process. And then critics go, it's very well researched. Well, no, it's really not. It just agreed with their bias. It confirmed their bias. And that's what makes a well-researched piece of anything now. Um, but I mean, we're, we're stuck in a death spiral in gaming right now in terms of gaming culture. Everybody's just tearing themselves apart online. And even if you don't want to talk about it, you say something that's even remotely connected to some beef some faction has with another faction, and you get hauled in. And... The decision you have then is, do I just shut this person down who who clearly cares a whole lot? They're caring through anger, but they still care. Do I shut that person down for my own sense of self-preservation because we know that engaging in the culture war right now, unless you've got a fairly safe job at a certain number of web, at certain websites and 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 hold a certain set of views um touching certain piles of poop online right now is just it's stupid you get nothing out of it um but then i know people feel upset because they got mass blocked from things and and they didn't do anything wrong or they didn't think they did anything wrong and, and nobody took the time to talk to them um and try to go look this is the impact you had And of course, why don't we talk about impact? Because the default response is, grow a thicker skin, or I don't care about your feelings. And I actually had somebody flip out on me today trying to convince me that I shouldn't care about the feelings of of white, straight, cisgendered men, because they're the majority. That's a ridiculous argument. If somebody's a human being, I'm going to care about their feelings. Like, that's stupid. Like, no one is going to convince me that I shouldn't care what a white dude feels. That the world is already doing it. The world already doesn't care about what a white man feels. Now, that's why white men get to think and do and create and invent and lead. There are trade-offs to that. But it's also very hard because dudes have to hide certain emotions, not all of them, but certain ones, more than women do. And that's wrong. And that, that leads to less diversity. Why? Because a man feels intimidated experiencing and, and, and uh, telling stories about gentler emotions. Um, we're seeing a lot more industry veterans have to leave AAA development to have to tell stories that mean something to them which means we're not getting those total package games anymore. We're getting emotional experiences that are four to six hours long, and then we're getting big blood and gut spectaculars that are empty and dumb, and the gameplay's really tight, but really, it's not saying much about anything. And then you're getting companies that make games that would be total packages in that way, but they're buggy as crap. We're not getting quality out of our current system that has been a... it hinges on the suck it up buttercup principle. Um, companies are getting more and more secretive. Um, they're making less and less meaningful marketing so that people like me can go through it and kind of um, look at it and go, well, this is what I'm seeing here and this is what I'm seeing here and, and these are my predictions based on that. The uh, advanced stuff we get from games now is almost useless as predictive tools because they're movies the number of games that go to market without any playable demo at a major show is ridiculous now these are games 
not movies. Would you buy a car without test driving it? No. So why are these things not playable? Well, they're putting multiplayer demos direct to consumer, but multiplayer is not campaign. We can't get a sense of how the mechanics flow. We can't get a sense of um, how the story is constructed, how the world is built, anything like that through multiplayer. Multiplayer is strangling any other game. And there again, if you're not willing to deal with abuse until you can hit that, you know, that mute button, multiplayer gaming is not accessible to you. Um, there, there are plenty of us who want a decent single player experience because we get insulted for a living. And we'd love to be able to play multiplayer stuff, but we don't like the culture surrounding it. It's not that we can't handle it. We don't like it. It's not our idea of a good time. I, I don't like seeing another person intentionally demeaned. I don't care who they are. I don't care who they are. I don't care if I disagree with them on, every, on anything. If I see somebody deliberately being dehumanized, I'm going to reach out to that person because that's what I think needs to happen to create better product and start creating jobs again and start getting people working because now we've got this disposable, this economy of disposable humanity. It's all shareholders that are benefiting. Companies are profitable. Companies are making money. They're still cutting jobs. Why? Because the shareholders need their dividends before anybody else gets paid grow a thicker skin workers that's just the way the economy works no no we shouldn't corporations basically have the right to vote through their dollar now and they have no responsibility for creating jobs for the workforce that's crazy that's crazy that's crazy but if you identify as a progressive or if you identify as anybody who any sort of designation that is about treating people better at least on paper you get lumped in with the most lunatic fringe of a movement that is out there to hurt people. I'll fully admit it. I, I am, you know, I'm an anti-stigma advocate and that puts me in, in a lot of, you know, intersected spheres. But I, I see people out there just, just trying to cover up their own bad behavior, claiming they're being stigmatized. You, you see it. And, you know, um disability advocacy gets around that with a concept called the dignity of risk and I think that's something we really need to bring into gaming and I'm going to look up dignity of risk so I don't watch it because my friend Todd will kill me if if I do um not a real not a real kill me not a credible threat not a real threat I'm just just figure of speech oh my god um but I'm gonna look up dignity of risk you know independent living principles is a disability thing that I should have memorized but I don't because I have a bunch of game junk in my head um, instead. And, but what it basically is, is um, the idea that even if somebody has a, a mental illness or a physical disability, they're still responsible for what they do. Uh, th th that comes down. That's what comes down to it. Uh, dignity of risk means respecting each individual's autonomy and self-determination or dignity to make choices for himself or herself. The concept means that all adults have the right to make their own choices about their health and care, even if healthcare professionals believe these choices in danger a person's health or longevity. Um, and that basically means that um, people can make choices that are bad. And what a uh, anti-stigma advocate has to do is go, okay, here are the predictable outcomes of various decisions here. Now that I've given you the outcomes, I am treating you like an adult and allowing you to make a choice I may not agree with. That's the basic principle there. And I think we can apply this to gaming as well. That, um, you know, if you write a blog airing your dirty laundry about a, a relationship, there's going to be a predictable blowback. However, if you do things that <laughs> make someone upset enough to write a blog about your personal activities, there are going to be consequences of that too, because whether you deserved the the outpouring of hate or not, the, there's a reasonable expectation that people are not going to behave illogically or ethically when they're, ups when they're extremely upset. 
And, and that's the, the gap in accountability that led to, you know, um, five months now, six months now, of people tearing each other apart online. Um, and the, the accountability for that has been completely overblown in some places, not recognized enough in others. And that's really frustrating to me because I'm looking at this and going, you know, talking about accountability for your own actions is something that's really, really important for everything. I'm obviously not just games. It's, it's really important. And I am so anti-slut shaming. It's not even funny. That's, that's not what anything's about here. It's about, are you owning your shit? And, you know, it's not, oh, you slept with somebody, you deserve to be shamed, or, or you took this picture, you deserve to be shamed. Absolutely not, no. The question is, how are you treating people? Are you treating people as disposable? Or are you treating people like they're meaningful human beings? And, and that, to me, is this divider when it comes to, you know, this criticism of certain women that happen to be in games right now are they themselves treating other people like actual human beings or are they treating people like pieces on a chessboard that's the divider for me and you can have a discussion about that that could be tangential to personal choices without involving those personal choices i don't know if that made any sense um, I don't want to bring up examples because I, I, you know, I'm already hedging sort of around examples and it's making me uncomfortable because um, some people have gotten just enough garbage and it's been totally unfair garbage. I don't care what anybody says. The amount of bile flung at anybody with a certain profile in gaming over the last five months has been ridiculous. No one, no one signed up for the amount of garbage that has been going on in the last little while. Nobody. It doesn't matter how tough you are. I lived in a... I went to a high school where people got shot and stabbed. I'm plenty tough. This... this Tearing into people's lives over games? Like... Part of the reason I'm so pissed off about it is I've, I've seen people bleeding because someone got offended. And I know how stupid it is. You know, when I was six, my, one of my best friends got blown up in an airplane over ideological choices that other people made. They, I was six. I had to learn what terrorism was because people got bent out of shape and depersonalized people because of, of stupid, really nothing things, really nothing. Fighting over religion is one of the dumbest freaking things in the world. And people are starting to treat video games like religion and extensions of their identity. And, and I shouldn't say that because the atheist community is just as guilty of this as anybody else. It's tribalism. It's not religion. Um, but, I mean, right now, I'm, I edited a book on religion and science fiction, and I'm really proud of it. And I can't get sane marketing on it right now because of, you know, what happened in Paris with the people automatically assume that I wrote a book on science fiction and religion as satire. And I didn't write it. I edited it. But, you know, no. We wrote stories involving religion that had science fiction and fantasy. They were science fiction and fantasy genre stories that dealt with religion. We were not satirizing religion. But now we have to deal with this stupid question. Did the people bringing this up actually read the books? No, they haven't read the book yet. They're just assuming because we wrote something with religious content that we're making fun of it. And so now I understand how, how frustrating it is and, and how surprising it is for these developers to get hit with these questions. Your game is this because of a gameplay mechanic. You know, there's, there's, no, playable there's no female playable characters, therefore it must be misogynist. What? Playable character is only one aspect of, of gender. It's only one aspect of exploring the question of gender. Assassin's Creed Unity turned out to be a great game that actually dealt with the role of women and, and the, the, the limitations and assumptions, and, and, and it dealt with disposable male syndrome. Um, this idea that, that you know, uh, spoiler warning, if Elise were a boy, she'd be expected to go out and avenge her father or her mentor, which is what happened in Assassin's Creed games over and over and over and over and over again. It's a, it's a device. It is a, you killed my mentor, I must avenge. But it's been men going after men because, you know, you put a woman in that role and it's violence against women. So Ubisoft brilliantly stuck a pin in that 
and made Elise's um, motivation somewhat opaque throughout the game. And then at the end, it's like, oh, okay, this is a really interesting study into why we don't have more women in these roles. Because we've been trained that it's hard to watch a woman get beat up. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying that in action related video in, in, in action driven video games it makes it harder to create pure art without politics getting in the way and purity of art is not helped by this grow a thicker skin idea you know everybody wants to be included i think that's absolutely fair like everybody should be included i don't care who you are games are big enough now but if a game has to sell, what is it up to now? Seven million copies? It used to be fine, but Tomb Raider with seven is ridiculous. Realistically, they are going to cast the widest nets and they're going to attempt to offend no one. And I'm not saying that's right. I think that's incredibly cowardly. I think we've got to lower the sales requirements on AAA games so they can start being less problem stories. Um, but I mean, I think 3 million is a good number, but I know that that that's not enough at, at current prices versus budgets. I mean, it, it's an intractable problem and, and expecting these big leaps in social justice ad advocacy under that model, it's just In a perfect world, I get a unicorn too, right? I mean, some try. Some companies try. It's never enough. I mean, when Bioware got accused of being transphobic, I was like, are you kidding me? Inquisition, because one character made a comment about um, uh, a trans man being a woman or a he, she, or something. I don't even remember the comment because it's like, this is from one character. That character's stupid. Um, I don't agree with this character's... Um, Ass assessment and the game's not telling me I have to I'm good but people are sensitive and I, I get that this is a very sensitive issue however we got to be realistic and we got to start talking to people in ways that are like did you consider this instead of starting with an accusation you open up with an accusation somebody's not going to listen to you because it's like well you're jumping to a conclusion about me why should I listen to you you're one of these grow a thicker skin types? Well, grow a thicker skin. You came at me with an accusation. I'm not talking to you. Bye bye That's what it is. And this, this idea that people should be able to come at somebody with, with no accountability for their own behavior as long as they don't actually threaten violence against them. It's not about that. It's not about threatening violence. It's not about whether I'm going to be harmed. You know, 99 times out of 100, no. No one's going to be actually dangerous, even if they say something stupid about wanting my head on a pike or I should be silenced. What it is, is there's absolutely no rational reason for me to try to continue on a conversation with these people. These people have dehumanized me. There's a high likelihood they're not going to listen to anything I'm saying. They just want blood. And when people just want blood, they're not going to be satisfied with anything but blood. Period. That's it. You know, I have tried to talk down people like that. Sometimes it works, but it only works in a minority of circumstances. Um, I've, you know, I've spent the last four months recognizing that some people just want to yell at me because I'm, I'm somebody who writes about games who will let them yell at me. So they yell at me. They tell me off and they call me a whole bunch of rotten names and, and they say I have saggy tits and that I'm fat and this... Uh, the things that have nothing to do with my ability to write and analyze games, you know, but I'm there. I'm an easy punching bag, but that's when I just kind of go, when somebody opens up that way, or when somebody's like, you're a misandrist, well, mute. You think I'm a misandrist. Why would I talk to you? You're a racist. Mute. You think I'm a racist. Why would I talk to you? You're transphobic. Mute. People really got to learn to separate the statements from the person making the statement, especially on Twitter. Twitter is 140 freaking characters. There is no nuance in that medium. So something can come across in a way that somebody didn't intend. And, and, and terms are used differently. 
okay? There are actual terminologies that are used in some academic spheres that do not mean the same thing as um, they do in pop culture. And all terms must be considered valid if somebody can prove they absolutely exist. But that's not, ha that's not what happens with these, these crusaders. You know, whether you're a crusader for ethics or whether you're a crusader for trans rights or whether you're a crusader for women or whatever, the minute you start trying to, trying to dictate what words mean to other people, people stop listening to you. You know, the thing I've been grateful for is when people have been respectfully coming to me and going, you know, well, this is my experience. You know, classic example, I love the game Sunset Overdrive. Love it. Think it's amazing. Good job, Insomniac. Good job, Xbox One. But one of the things I credited the game for was the uh, option of having, like, uh, 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 you know, skinny wafy body type for women or a more voluptuous body type. And then, you know, you could have a skinny guy or a more muscular guy. Well, somebody pointed out on Twitter that you can't play as a fat person of either gender. And at first I went, well, of course not. They're swinging, they're active, they wouldn't wait. The whole game doesn't make any freaking sense. Physics get defied. It's goofy, you know. Um, a power line never snaps when you're grinding on it, even though something exploded. Like, the game is surreal. It's not reality. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, overweight people should be able to play as themselves in a game with character customization that, that is not super realistic. That's right. I hadn't considered it, but that is right. They are right. Point for them. And I've incorporated that into my thinking about things going forward, about how much customization um, should be there. Now, granted, that makes a different development thing, but fat people play games. Big people. Sorry, sorry said an F word. Um, there's a large portion of the population that is overweight. And if somebody owns that and won't be ashamed of it, and like, I want to play as myself. I exist. I'm a fat person. I want to be able to play as a character that looks like me. Fair. Totally fair. If that makes the experience more fun for them, games are about fun, right? Um, and, and so that was an example of because somebody came at me and didn't go, you're fat phobic or you're lookist, I listened more. But if somebody came at me and like, you hate fat people, well, oh, no, <laughs> and I know that, so I'm not going to listen to you because you just made an assumption about me, so I'm not going to give you the time of day. And things like that, and, and th that example of effective communication where somebody actually uh, evolved my opinion on something through a tweet, it does happen. It does happen, all these people saying Twitter's a terrible method of communication. No, people can change people's minds through Twitter. To, through Twitter. It happens all the time. Um, so that's why I want to take this whole grow a thicker skin thing and just, you know, in the rubbish bin because it, it's not effective. It might make you feel good to beat on someone, to make you feel better and more powerful. It doesn't change that other person's views at all. In fact, it may push them towards the other side. I mean, everybody was so upset about Felicia Day crossing that street because of, of a Call of Duty player. Well, there's shared accountability for her being made afraid. And notice I said shared accountability, not one side or the other, both warring, freaking horde versus alliance people um, led her into that opinion. And at the end of the day, somebody that shouldn't have been afraid is afraid. And I've seen this a lot on Twitter, that a lot of women are afraid to voice their opinions. And I'm sitting here going, <laughs> look, I'm going to mess up my hair. This is what it does to me. This is what that makes me feel when I see women afraid to voice their opinions about games, because that's the precise opposite direction of where we should be moving. And they're not saying that to get attention. God, no no woman in her right mind says, I'm scared on Twitter and expects to get anything but negatives from that. Trust me. Um, uh, that's a topic for another time. But um, seeing, you know, women... And, I, and they're... Okay, got to correct myself. 
there are some guys that are intimidated to speak their mind in a public forum as well. They they direct message me instead of tweeting me directly because they know they're going to get dogpiled because people watch my Twitter feed. Because what's she going to say now? How can we get her? And they go after other people that I, I decide to engage in conversation in. And, and this is a big problem. Uh, I don't want my Twitter feed to be toxic. I can't text friends of mine. I can't tweet friends of mine who I support because I know that some stupid little creeper that I'm, I'm not blocking because I believe in free speech and I think these people just have a bad way of communicating. Some little creeper is going to go on them and what do you think about that? No! You know, nobody, no, this has nothing to do with this conversation. Stop jumping in and acting like a jackass because then I am going to have to block you because I can't have a conversation with my friends who I actually know in real life who happen to live in a different city and communicate predominantly by Twitter. I've had relationships like that damaged because my Twitter feed is so toxic right now. And so I see women and men afraid to speak their minds about games. That is a loss to gaming as a whole. That is a loss because they're sensitive enough to have a good viewpoint about something, a balanced viewpoint. They haven't lost their humanity to the point that their decision is one of a bullying idiot. You know, and, and it is. If, if, you, if you don't have any regard for how your behavior is affecting the recipient of that behavior, you, you are coming at a place of, of a bully. You, you don't care about the impact that it's having on that person. You have lost your empathy. And empathy is the thing that makes us human. You know, I mean, games are all about empathy. Games are all about making you care about something that's not real. So the fact that we don't have that fundamental design principle in our discussions about that medium, that's a disconnect, you know? And we have to start making our discussions reflect the products. And more and more we're getting away from that. And so I think the first step to that is getting rid of this grow a thicker skin or I don't care about white men's feels um, attitude. I think that'll help a lot because it means we will have effective discussions instead of just loud discussions. But I've been talking about this for 30 minutes now and I promised I wouldn't go this long. It's a complicated situation. It's a complicated situation, right? I mean, um, there's no easy answer, but I think this is a start. Uh, And this doesn't mean that people get to avoid fair criticism by saying they're harassed. No, that's not what it means. What it means is that a person is going to take that out you're not going to convince them anyway. So stop giving them ammunition to use against you. Make sense? Okay, makes sense. Now let's make, let's hope the audio on this video doesn't suck.